Hey, uh, Dan from danwagner.co with a quick demo and walkthrough of the code I employed to identify uniques and duplicates in a big block of long, kind of nasty IDs here. And I'm going to contrast this strategy, which revolves around a couple of dictionaries, to some other strategies for identifying uniques and duplicates that I've seen bouncing around in one particularly interesting LinkedIn thread. So let's dive into it. This first routine here, our mark duplicates, is the original example that I stumbled upon in this fantastic LinkedIn conversation. So what this tool is going to, to give us is a sorted list of the IDs and an indication here in the duplicate column in B that this particular ID is either unique, right? It occurs only once, or it's a duplicate, it occurs more than once. And so in this situation, we have about 322,000 rows. Oops, let's get clicked in there. Yeah, and about 2,000 of them are truly unique, and the rest are duplicated. And so you can see I have one worksheet here that's labeled original, and one worksheet that's labeled faster with dictionary, no tricks up my sleeve here. And I'm just going to run them side by side and then talk a little bit about the dictionary performance and how that particular script works. So without further ado, I'm going to click play and run the original. Should be wrapping up soon. Awesome. So you can see I've got a little timer built into the message box here. It looks like it took about 30 seconds and the results give me what I would expect. I have a duplicate and unique labels. If I select unique only, I should get 2,000 of them. Let's just make sure that's right. Yep, 2,000 of them, sweet. So mission accomplished. We got our unique identifiers uh, labeled as uniques and the rest are labeled as duplicates. One minor drawback is that the IDs have had their order changed. So if I select duplicate again, you can see that they've been uh, alphabetized. So when I click on over to faster with dictionary and I run this macro instead, I'm going to click play and we'll see how quickly this one evaluates. Sweet. So you can see that one took about, let's say, two and a half seconds. And let's make sure that the results are the same. I want to look at just the uniques. And I also caught all 2,000 of them here. And one of the, uh, what I would consider upsides of this particular methodology is that it does not change the original order of the data in your sheet because we're not relying on the built-in sheet uh, sort functionality uh, that the first strategy was working on. So let's go ahead, clear that filter, and let's spend a little time walking through the script here. You can find all the code and copy-paste it into your own uh, workbooks and, and routines as need be uh, from the link that's included in the description. So promise me you won't click pause and try and type all this stuff out really quick. It's much easier to copy-paste. So uh, let's go ahead and work our way down. Uh, first things first, we set references up front, right? I want to pick out the worksheet, right? It's faster with dictionary. I identify the last row using last occupied row number. You can see down here I've defined this function, but you can also get that function from the VBA tool belt, which is something I would highly recommend. One thing I want to take a second to talk about here is this compare mode parameter. So when you create a scripting dictionary, by default, 
the keys are case sensitive. And so in this particular case, I'm not really interested in uh, lowercase and uppercase letters meaning different things, right? I just want it all to work out regardless of the case. And so to do that, you set the compare mode parameter to be VB text compare instead of VB binary compare, I think is the other option. No, it doesn't, didn't auto populate there, but I think it's uh, I think it's binary compare, but text compare is what makes more sense here. I don't really care about the difference between upper and lower case. Moving right along, we store our variant uh, we store our IDs in a variant array by using uh, the range to variant array equivalency right here. And then we create a variant array called uh, var status. Eventually, we're going to fill in all the values of var status with either unique or duplicate. But for quick generation purposes, we just set it equal to the ID variant array. So here is where we're exploring this information. Uh, essentially, we're checking each ID. We want to make sure that it's not blank. And the first thing we do is check it against this distinct dictionary. And so if the ID has already occurred before, then we know it's a duplicate. And if it's a duplicate, then we add it to the duplicates dictionary. And so as we work our way down the list, we populate a dictionary full of distinct IDs and a dictionary full of duplicate IDs. And so once we have all the duplicates stored in our duplicate dictionary, we take another pass through the variant IDs, which is our, our column A here, essentially. And we check each ID. If the ID already exists inside the dictionary of duplicates, then we know it's a duplicate, and so we can label that in the status variant array as duplicate. If the key does not exist in our duplicates dictionary, then we know it's unique, and so we can label that particular row in the status array as unique. And finally, our last step is to assign this variant array back to the worksheet in the B column here. And then we, we hit the user with a little message box to let him or her know that it's done and also how long it took. Hopefully that helps and I would love to hear if you have a way to do this even faster. Let me know via the uh, website that's linked below. Thanks so much.